Welcome to the Spinner Rat. Welcome back, issue 25, part 3 of the Spinner Rack for our Halloween extravaganza. Ooh, you gotta play some spooky music and all this shit. <laughs> Something. At the end of part 2, Carrie, you were about to start. Uh, yeah, we were, you know, uh, there's always, you know, going back to Halloween and horror stories and that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. I mean, everyone's got their ghost stories. Of course. Everyone's got, so the one, the one that, you know, we all have ours that we grew up with, one of the ones that I was going to mention. Uh, after Junior mentioned about baby powder on the floor and finding something, there is I can't remember the exact area. And this is it, what, it's in Cary, I, I, ironically, I believe. I, in Cary, it, it's in that area. I, I or Lake in the know, Hills the, or something the, in that area. But the but the <laughs> yeah, no I, shit. You know, you know, no, no, no. I've I heard the story when I first moved out here. I was like, get the fuck out of here. So what it what it was was yeah, it was boy, it was a so. the, the rumor. And once again, I th- this was the story was that years you know many many years ago that some children were uh, killed in a accident with a school bus that got stuck on the tracks and the train hit him and killed it was Crystal Lake. It was a Crystal Lake yeah. and killed all these children. So what the 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 rumor, the ghost story is, is if you pull up, it, it was kind of like on a, an uh, an incline. Yeah. That if you pull your car up towards that railroad crossing and put your car in neutral that the car will go up over the thing, over the tracks, and down the side. And if you were to check your car, if there was any dust or anything on the windows, you would see little handprints of children pushing the car over the, uh, I the heard railroad that. tracks. It is. When I was a teenager, there was all these stories about Munger Road over in Elgin. I don't know that. I heard something about How there were Satanists and shit out there. I uh, heard this uh, as well. Cuba. And, uh, Cuba. Cuba Road. No, it's that? actually, actually Munger Or by Road. O'Hare. Is that the one by no, O'Hare? No, it's, uh, it's actually right over... In between Bartlett and Elgin, because there's another one in, o- of, uh, in O'Hare that you don't wander around in at night in the Forest Preserve over there. That was off of West really? Bartlett mm-hmm. Road. There, there's all kinds of fucking. I gotta hear all these stories. This is a ghost story there, half hour. <clears throat> I went out there because that's just how I am. <clears throat> if someone's like, "Oh, there was a ghost or some crazy shit," you want let's to go it. fucking Let, see. Let's share a blow with them. Let's go. I'm <laughs> gonna get high and go out there and fuck with some Satanists. And uh, do we out there? Nothing. Nothing. But there's this now. That road's been all redone now. Since, I mean, I was talking, I'm like 17, so this was 20 years ago. And uh, we went over the train tracks out there, and we stopped because I saw a little cabin back in the woods. And that's where all like, goes bad. About like 25 feet. So we pulled the car to the side, stopped. I'm like, you should go out there. I'm going out there. So it became this whole conversation about who's got the nuts to go out there. I didn't have the nuts to go out there. Okay. But it yeah. was his idea. Yeah. Yeah. I'm talking about debunking <laughs> stupid shit, but when there's creepy little wooden cabins fucking yeah. 50 feet out in the woods, by the tracks... What can go wrong? wrong? Fuck that wrong. shit, son. This is bad shit waiting to happen. <laughs> I'm gonna... This is the part in the horse. Yeah. Well, yeah. 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 So we got my buddy to go out there. And we didn't even get out the car, dude. Watch they the all get out and everything happens in the car. <laughs> we <laughs> walked out there about 20 feet in the woods, <laughs> and we heard... And this motherfucker came running back. <laughs> Never found out what was going on down there. We came uh, back during the day, though. It was an empty cabin back there. Someone, some bum must have been living back there with a dog or something. You, you hope. I you would know, hope. You, that's your story. But I've never seen no Satanists. Yeah. Because people are like, oh, dude, you go out there and park your car, and just like they'll come out of it. They'll kill you and sacrifice you. I'm like, man, fuck that shit. So he went. No. Yeah, yeah. You gotta try it. Well, that, well, or the uh, the story of what was it, Resurrection Mary? That's Resurrection Mary, fuck yes! I forgot her name. I was going to bring it up. Yeah. It's in Chicago. That's that's out your neck of the woods, probably. Yeah, you drive past this graveyard and she'll be out there hitchhiking. Supposedly, yeah. The 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 story is uh, what cemetery is that? Uh, you know, I don't remember the cemetery. Like Resurrection, I think it's Resurrection was Cemetery. It? It's, okay. it's like a big cemetery in the, in the city. There's a lot of them. And uh, I think it's on the north side. And the deal is that this, you know, you, there would be someone out hitchhiking, and you pick this, you know, girl up and where to, and then the next thing you know, she's fucking gone. You take her to wherever, and it's just she's out of the car. Yeah. And you're just like whoa. And then you look, yeah, look back, it's gone. Wow, I heard shit like that. Or the Bob Woods. See, I heard that story, no, no, no. but it wasn't at a cemetery. I heard I was over <coughs> on um, near Harlem and Irving, mm-hmm. over on Oak Park and Irving Park, kind of in that area. I guess there used to be uh, a crazy home, and they demolished. It's been, since been demolished or abandoned or some shit. But that's where I heard that there was a ghost hitchhiker. It wasn't but see, uh, I, Resurrection I, Mary is a very famous one. Yeah, totally. That one, that one's that one's been told. There's all these reports of Satanists 
and the Lost Graveyard album. Of Bob See, now this is how you know I'm a punk, because I'm all like this, yeah, but right, I'm watching like you guys tell me this, scared. but yeah, but as soon as I dro drop your ass off, I'm going to be like, man, where's my iPod? And <laughs> listen to something, fucking listen to Alvin and the Chipmunks, <laughs> something, put on my daughter's fucking Dora CD and just jam out, you know? But my friend, she told us about this stuff, she's like, oh, you know, there's this Lost Graveyard out there and shit. And I was like, dude... Well, it's not lost if you fucking know about like, it. This is bullshit, you know, let's let's fucking go. Right, right. And we had to cut a fence to get in to mm -hmm. find this graveyard. So we brought a cooler <laughs> and a couple did. cases of beer. Because you got, you know, you got to right. do that shit in style. <laughs> if you're going to walk around in some creepy and woods looking for Satan, I mean, and, and, drink some beer while you're doing it. And also, too, I mean, there's, there, I mean, you know, there's there's books on this stuff. I mean, there's the Chicago, uh, the tour the yeah. tours of the... Of the but, you know, to stuff. her credit, dude, we found the fucking the right. graveyard. And it was a, a lot of, there were a lot of unmarked graves, there were a lot of graves from the 1800s. A lot of old sunken and shit, it was yep. very fucking creepy, dude. But the Satanists, you know. Nah, they, didn't, they didn't find you. And there was, I can't remember where it was, the uh, the Satan chair. I don't remember where that's at, though. The yeah. Satan chair, I don't think I heard Dude, of that one. This, what, this is, a, it's a creepy story. Once again, like, more ghost stories, folks, and I don't remember if it's in this state. There is a graveyard or something where the, with the thing was that there was a grave... Uh, in the middle of this fucking graveyard is a stone chair. And you would basically sit in this chair and make a wish, you know, kind of you know, like sealing the deal. And supposedly that you're it's it's a link. And you go in this chair and you say, Okay, you know, I want to be famous and then stage, you know, sell my soul basically. And uh he'd be the one guy who's like, you know what, this fucking chair is too damn small. I, I can't right. fit. I damn it. I'm stuck in the sit in the chair and make a wish for me. I'm, I'm, like, I'm stuck I'll, in the I'll break out some butter. I'm stuck in the fucking I'm stuck in the fucking chair. <laughs> Can we do shit about this? <laughs> yeah, I was thinking the same thing. So that's a that's another one. I don't remember where specifically that one is, but that was another uh, ghost story story. Now, have you guys personally have e ever encountered anything that you might think of? Holy shit. No, I think it's all bullshit. Yes. I haven't. I, You've I, never encountered anything in your life? No. Nothing that made you no, think maybe? No, there's nothing that makes me go, you know what, there's something else out there. I think it's all bullshit. Okay. And it, 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 I like your mind frame. No, but you know what? It, <laughs> I, listen, even if it's scared the fuck, I would like to at least see that to go, okay, there's something else. Um, you know, that's just no strange occurrences, nothing, nothing like that, nothing, nothing ever in your no, life. I mean, that what about you? I think we've talked about this. Yeah, no. I've gotten a couple times, but I still don't really put. A I've got of, one that stands I, out. I to put me. a lot of of uh, belief that it was more of my imagination, imagination? and Mental? fear than that it was really there. Uh, when I lived in Tennessee, when I was twelve. And around Halloween, me and my friends went and hung out in this graveyard, and we were smoking cigarettes because you know that's what bad little white kids do. And uh, dude, we got chased out of the fucking graveyard by an apparition. Um, it was big. It was creepy. It was Ill like illuminating. Light. It was. It was the night watchman. You do though. It was creepy. It was I, see, I'm thinking of Scooby Doo night. right now. Yeah, it was know? very, it was very <laughs> Scooby Dooish, dude. Like I sometimes now thinking back as an adult. Okay. Wonder if maybe that just wasn't some asshole so in a with suit. You. Yeah, just like, I'm going to fuck with kids that come yep. out here tonight. Right. And then, my uncle owned a fence company over on North Am or on Lake Street in Hanover Park across the street. Kind of like where the police station is. Okay. He bought this big huge property. It had some warehouses and shit for his fence company. The house became my aunt's craft store. Okay. Now, weird shit started happening. Like, they would come in, and the Pope reholders would be turned upside down on the floor, but there wouldn't be a drop of potpourri spilt. Or they would find, like, shit written. Mm -hmm. in, in just, like, all kinds of random things. that People would feel breezes or someone see someone. And there was, they had a woman that was, I guess, like a spiritualist. She just randomly came in there and started asking my aunt questions mm -hmm. about someone that had lived there. And my aunt's, my cousin actually investigated and found out that the previous owners of that house had a, like a, a 20 year old son that died in a brutal car accident and they believed this woman was saying that his spirit still roamed around there mm. and like my cousin had a band that practiced there in the basement and fucking they would always see weird shit but I was there one night because well it was fenced in I caught fence and it was a good place to smoke weed as see, Every I'm story man. has I, drugs. Is that a theme? Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm telling you, it's, it's, that's the curse of being me as a teenager. <laughs> I was constantly smoking weed. I'm wondering how much of this was actually... Uh, but, uh, anyways. I, was, I would go, he had like all this like uh, yard stuff set up in the front. It was a huge property. 
and they had a big, huge uh, gazebo. Mm -hmm. And I would sit in the gazebo. I'd hit the pop machine, the snack machine, get some snacks, and you know, smoke a joint by myself and fucking munch and just chill. And one night I was up there. It was the last night I ever went there by myself. I saw someone up in the window, okay. and I know no one was fucking there with me. And it was like two o'clock in the morning, and it was weird because I'm sitting there and I look up, and there was a person in the fucking highest. And I don't even really know how you could have gotten to this window. It would have been an attic window, okay. which I'd never been in. And they were staring at me. I could see their face down at the fucking gazebo, and I cut the fuck out. Dude. And the whole way home, like you said, the whole way home I was creeped. <laughs> the whole walk home, like I thought I was getting chased by a demon one night walking over from Brian's house. Just, it took how much? What kind of drugs were you I was on? completely sober. <laughs> it took me eight blocks to realize it was a skunk. <laughs> <laughs> well, you were, at least something was chasing you. It was you. dark as yeah, hell. Yeah, at least you that it was dark as hell, and it had a white mohawk. And I'm like, what in the fuck? It's like, <laughs> <"Mama> <laughs> chasing me. <laughs> and he finally hit streetlights. I, you know, a little skunk came walking. And, and the God. skunk, you know, waited and said, "Hey, dude, I just fucked up." Right yeah, some guy. Yeah. <laughs> now I, I got to. I'm sitting. Uh, I was actually on the front porch listening to my radio, and my dad was in the living room watching TV. It's like three o'clock in the afternoon, bro. It's the middle of the summer, you know. Just and um, actually, no bullshit. I'm mixing up my stories. I'm sorry. Some I can't, somebody fucking died. Who was it? it? Wasn't my grandmother? That was after I moved out to Elgin. Anyways, long story short. I'm sitting on the front porch. Somebody had just, somebody close to us had just passed. It wasn't bothering me too much. Dad was in the living room watching baseball at 3, 4 o'clock in the afternoon. I go inside real quick because uh, the mailman had brought... Remember, I don't know if you guys remember, East Coast Comics out in New Jersey. They used to have the ads in the comics, you know, mail order. So I always order my comics through them. And they were, like, discounted like crazy and shit. So the mailman was giving me shit. He's just like, how do I... Because he walked past... He gave us the mail and walked past the house, but he still had the package in his thing. And I was like, hey, that's mine, you know? He goes, well, how do I know this is who you are? Do you have ID? I'm like, dude, I'm a fucking kid. I don't have an ID, <laughs> you know? So he's like... Well, Check go, your ass. He's like, go get, a, go get a parent. If you get a parent, you know... So my dad comes out, gets the box for me, go back in. He's sitting watching the game. I'm in the living room, and I'm, like, looking through the package and shit. It's quiet as fuck. You know, commercial comes. He's one of those guys. He mutes the commercials. I'll sitting here the kitchen sink, like the water, the faucet's going. He looks at me and goes, why the fuck did you leave the faucet on? I was like, I didn't even go in the kitchen. You left the faucet on. He's like, I didn't go in the fucking kitchen. The faucet was on. Like, you could hear it. Both of us were fucking hearing it. And he was just looking at me. He goes, well, your mom's not home. Your sister's not home. Who the fuck? I was like, so he's like, go turn it off. I said, fuck you. And the only time I ever told my dad, fuck you. I was like, fuck you. You go do it. And he looked at me like, no, you just didn't, you know. So he's like. All right, so he gets up and uh, he goes. Once he goes in the kitchen and turns the corner, the faucet stops. And uh, I go. And he goes, "Come here!" But he's not like in the door. And he's just like, "Come here!" I'm like, mm. "He's like." Then he comes like, "No, seriously, come here. You're not gonna believe this." So I go over there and I go, "What?" He goes, "The faucet was wet. Okay, like the top, like the the handle part." The sink was completely dry. Like, nothing had dripped. It was just like, you know, like you got wet hands, so you touch the top of the faucet. So it's one of those things. He goes, the faucet was off. I go, okay. He goes, well, you heard it, right? He says, yeah. He goes, I fucking heard it, too. He goes, so why is the handle wet, but the sink is dry? And I'm just like, I'm going to Oscar's house. <laughs> and grab my comics and fucking jet it out of there. We need to move, Dad. You know? And it was one of those things. And, like, we got, when my parents bought this house, they bought it, um, there was an elderly couple who was renting, it was it was a cottage home that, how do I describe it, like, we, there was an apartment building, it was like two apartments, okay, their backyard was the cottage home's front yard, you see what I'm saying, so it was a house behind a house, so my parents used to rent, and then uh, the elderly couple, nicest couple in the world, I swear to you, the, the woman passed away when I was very young, so... The son would come and check on the father every now and then. And once it got to the point where the father couldn't do it on his own, they sold my parents the house. So my mom would tell me, she's like, I f there's times I feel like I'm sleeping and I hear Mr. or Mrs. Pender saying something to me. Or I feel them at the foot of my bed. And my mom's like, I fucking hate this shit, you know. But I've never, I never had a problem. I was always scared shitless because I slept in the attic, but the attic was decked out to like a bedroom, you know. And that's where I had my Freddy Krueger dream. Fuck sleep with the lights on and shit. And I wouldn't play in that shit. Fuck you. But that was my one instance that I can remember where I was just like, I need to go to church. <laughs> it's Wednesday. I don't care. I need to go. Because Catholics only go on Sunday. So I said, I need to go to church now. <laughs> That's awesome. You know, it was just, it oh, creeped yeah. the shit out of me. That's awesome. It's drink, the sink was completely dry, but the faucet out, was, had some water on it. And we're just like, you yeah, know, never had like, holy shit. Yeah, that's never had anything tangible. It's always weird shit. But to this day, it's I still don't believe in yeah. any of that bullshit. Yeah. I don't. Like I told you earlier, I believe what I believe. And, you know, and that's it. And I think that's what's helped keep me partly sane, is because I don't believe in that shit. Otherwise, I'd be fucking 
See? Terrified That's right now. HP Lovecraft stuff, you know? Yeah, Things, totally. right? You know, there's, it's just that far, that far between, you know. I'd be fucking terrified right now. Cool. You know? One little snap and there's shit out there. <laughs> yeah. That's it. You, I just, things you don't need to know. You know? And then to ground myself. Nigga, we in a comic book store. Nigga, there's an issue of Batman right there. Right. You know what I mean? E.T. There's a podcast. Yeah, we're, yeah. I'm grounding <laughs> myself, all right? We've got the special guest, E. Tizzle. E. Oh, yeah, hey, E.T. You're going to have to take a picture of him. Put him on. Post it as the, the thumbnail. Oh, you, know what, the you know what it could be? It could be like like the, the gnomes that you put on people's living room. Nice. You kidnap the gnomes. You kidnap E.T. Take them to the bar. You know? That would be awesome. You want to pay for this? Is yeah, tell no. All right. Tell no. We just don't tell say, people. That's the thing. Three hundred dollars. Um, yeah. 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 No, let's not tell people. They're not gonna notice this fucking missing. If I win the fucking lottery yeah. this next week, yeah. I'm coming back with tea, and we're just gonna go around and take tea places. I used to do that shit with my Chucky doll. Once yeah. well, again, in my early twenties, it was my buddy. Week. My buddy would, uh, or my ex buddy, he would fucking lean back in the seat and put Chucky. Like I pull up at a red light and try to keep the straightest face, and he'd have Chucky headbanging to the music and shit, like doo, doo, out the window. Dude, I remember I took this fucking Chucky doll to school. This is when I was at Larkin. No, I shit you not, dude. I would take the Chucky doll, and I'd grab him by his shoulders in the hallway, and I'd do this to make it look like he's running. I had people slamming themselves against the fucking locker trying to get away. Greatest day ever at that school. I hated that school. Greatest day ever. I remember sophomore year, we watched Arachnophobia in my biology oh, class. Oh, great movie. And I had seen Arachnophobia <laughs> a handful of times before then, so I purposely sat behind Is this girl, girl someone? and then every time I'd be like, ah, ah, ah. <laughs> fucking great. Now, here's, here's, since it is Halloween, what are your memories, or how has Halloween changed, I think, from when we were kids, because me and Brian are in our 40s, to, you Not know. Not quite yet, I'm going to be 38. No? Okay, yeah. sorry. Yeah, I'm age my <laughs> um, to say, you know, I wish John was here for this. To, you know, Junior, and since, and since you have a daughter, I mean, how do you think Halloween, you know, do you take your daughter out trick-or-treating, and how trick-or-treating and costumes have changed? Because, uh, once again, me and Brian had a discussion on the way here, we were just kind of talking about God, the old cheesy costumes that we had as kids. I mean, they're they cheesy. They came in a box. They they're like wax, and they had the little mask. Yes, string. I remember they, those. But you know what? They're classic now. I wish they made them for adults. But it was always it was for for people who don't know what these were. So it was a company, and you would go to like the local like God, they were drug stores, or they didn't have costume shops. You would go to Sears Kmart. or whatever Kmart, and they were these cheesy masks with a rubber band of whatever the character were. And they were creepy just because of what they were. They, you know, they they didn't have real good molds. Yeah, totally not. And and you would have this this like costume you would put on. It would have the legs and the like arms. A suit. A suit. <laughs> it would tie in the back, but the chest was always. If you got lucky, you got the cool one that actually looked like the like part of the character. But normally, what it was, it was just a picture of the character. So if it was a stormtrooper, right. you'd have the stormtrooper mask, white arms, white legs, and a picture of the stormtrooper on the chest. And but. And or say Star Wars, right? Or some but shit. but you know they're they're cool now, and at the time that's all you had. So you're like, oh, I want this. And what was funny is they would have the knockoffs too. I used to, and I told Brian the story. I said, you know, when I was a kid, Planet of the Apes was huge. So they had this line of Planet of the Apes. But my parents, because God forbid, they actually buy like the brand name, you know. So you had the generic ones. So it wasn't Planet of the Apes. It was just an ape. So you know, and my parents would wonder why I got pissed off. It's like it's Planet of the Apes. No, it's not. It's that's an ape. You know, those kind yeah, of stuff. I I mean, a, did you have those? I had a Pac-Man one. A Pac-Man? And it was just a, it was like a Pac-Man mask, and then it was, a, the the sleeves were yellow, the chest was white, the legs were yellow, and it just had Pac-Man getting chased by ghosts on the chest, <laughs> yep. and it said Pac-Man. <laughs> I mean, they were, they were, they were, they were, they were, yeah, they, they, were don't make those anymore, they were, man. they were, they were cheesy slash awesome. I mean, you, you know, now you look back and you go, God, those are, for what they are, they were cool, but they weren't cool. Yeah, it no. was. It was for nostalgia's it's sake. It's went to a whole new level now. Whole and uh, level. so, I mean, when we, I mean, when we used to be able to go, I mean, trick or Halloween was a big deal. I mean, and you didn't have to worry about shit. That's right. what I mean. And you have kids too, so I mean, I, I the perspective now. Yeah, when I was a kid, you would get out of school, and if you didn't already have your costume on, you'd run home, put your costume on, and go right away all fucking night. Right, yeah. and there was there was. I it mean, was your parents telling you what time to come home, right. not the law. Yeah, exactly. Right, and you would go. You would see groups of kids going. I mm-hmm. mean, and you would go up and down the block. I and never. That's one thing. I never got to go out on my own. But, but, but no? you, as I got older, yeah. But by that time, trick or treating had already changed. Yeah, it doesn't. I don't. I don't even, about. I don't think that exists anymore. I think. I think. You know. I mean. Obviously, kids going out with their friends. It does. Well, but I mean. I mean, just the, the whole trick or treating. I think it's less and less. I think people. I once again. Yeah, I. It's, don't, I, it's I, not I, like it was. No. Like when we were kids, it was like I mean, rows. Oh yeah, you would see kids. kids nonstop. Or now it's kind of like you know, like a handful. 
I think a lot of parents are just like well, fear just, has become yeah. a big yeah. part of our oh, society. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's, because it's, there's idiots out there's there. There's assholes, yeah. And I mean, even when we were kids, you had like, oh, there's they're putting you know poison, poison in the candy, uh, yeah, right. poison. You know that shit's been happening since like the eighties. Right. And why do it? Yeah. Well, but that's exactly that. That's a good well because people are fucked up. Yeah, and people are fucked up. And you know, doing that hurts the <coughs> hurts hurts growing up and shit. Like I know? had friends when I was like eleven, whose parents didn't let them go trick or treating. They would just take them to the store and buy them two or three bags of right. candy. And be like here you go. Now do you well your yours yours is too young. But now yeah. do you take your your daughter trick or treating? Oh yeah. Or do you take her to the no, malls? No, we've taken her trick or treating. We dress her up in her costume and we now the first two times we did, she was obviously way too young. But we would just she put her in her we put her in a costume. Her mother would carry the bucket, and I'd carry her, and we just go to door to door, you know, and trick or treat. That's all. That's what Melissa wants to do with the baby. No, oh, well, this year she's hyped, man. She's gonna be a pirate. She's yeah. good. She's she's she got the hook. She's got the big earrings. She's got the the red bandana. She's like the female pirate. She's good to go. It was either that or the pink ranger, and she was like she couldn't decide. But then she tried the pink ranger costume on, and she saw the mask, and she's not she's fidgety. She's just like, I don't want to wear this shit. So I was like, all right, pirate it is. So she's she's hype. She knows. Now, when you were younger, were you able? Like I said, you're a city kid. Mm -hmm. Were you able to go trick or treating? Did you have the droves of kids going door to door? Um, or was it just? It was like the way Brian described it. You got out of school, right? You know, after a while in, in my grammar school, like I think when I hit sixth, seventh grade, mm -hmm. they stopped letting kids wear the costumes to school. Yeah. You know, and they're like, oh, well, that fucking sucks because that was like you. Got, it's like it's like Easter. Yeah. You know, growing up on Easter, you had to have the new outfit, the new shoes, well, we everything. The, you were we showing off. We had parades in the school, school. when we were a little oh, yeah. younger. We had the parades. We we had that when I was young, when I was like kindergarten, first right. grade. But then it died out, and well, then as I got sixth. older, okay. see, by the time I got to sixth grade, which was sixth grade was what 95, 94, 95. So they cut out the whole costumes. To, you know, if you weren't in kindergarten, you couldn't wear a costume. That's when they started imposing the yeah. time limits too. Right? Yeah, yeah. Because I was about twenty years old at that point. So it was, um, you know, it was like I like you're saying, it was nice to wear your costumes, but if you didn't, you know, when it was uh, okay to wear them, if you didn't have it, yeah, you'd run home, you go out. With us, with me growing up, my mom didn't trust. I was still kind of young, and you know, the crazies out there and shit. So she would take us. We'd go maybe a four or five block right. radius, and we'd fill up. You know, it was. I didn't care did that you, I wasn't with my guys, friends. Did you guys ever do the hunt for this? This can this house gives the best candy. We need to go there. Well, yeah, you, 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 you had the. We always want my parents right. to take us to the Richie neighborhood. Yep. Yeah. Of course. You need the full size. Full size. Yep. Yep. Right. We had a couple or of those. How about the bastards just give you pennies? You're like, what the right? fuck is yeah, this? What the fuck? <laughs> <I'm> a pencil. <laughs> I can't what get the, the pencil. Why? Why? Pencil. <laughs> now, yeah. now, when did you guys go ahead. stop trick or treating? What age? Because I this is going to be fourteen. Fourteen. About fifteen, sixteen. See, I was, I was the freak. I went to because obviously with the cosplay, I went till I was like, I, I, I want to say all through high school. Yeah. But what was so funny is because, and also too, it was just starting when I was old to get less kids. You know what I'm saying? It was just, I, I it wasn't bad, but I, I think it's you know obviously it's dwindled because of all the crap. But I mean, I, I, I want to say till I went to senior year, I would throw something on and go in the neighborhood. And what was so funny is people would look at you. Well, rightfully so, I guess. Looking back. But go, you know, aren't you a little old for this? But I, I, I looked at them. They said, aren't you a little old for this? I said, I'm old enough to remember where you live. Is it worth the Snickers? <laughs> That's Cause, awesome. Because nice. I'm like, I'm like, it's free candy. I'm yeah, not the, passing this up. The you last know? year that I went out trick or treating, I didn't go. And then my brother and my little brother and sister came home and they had all this candy. And I'm like, you should have went. Motherfucker, I want some candy. Oh, you just so I threw Jack on Ferris. my dad's coveralls and a hockey mask and hit it. And, dude, at least five people are like, you've already been here. I'm not giving in. I'm like, man, I just left my house 20 minutes ago. <laughs> and I had friends that would do that, dude. They would go Change out. Change costumes. And yeah. they would switch costumes. Yep. And hit it again. Mm-hmm. See, I never did that. Like I said, my mom would take us trick-or-treating. I, I didn't mind that I was with my mom. You know, I was like, fuck it. The whole point is, I'm getting candy. Well, that was my point. Yeah. I didn't care if I was with Free friends candy. or not. I'd see friends. Like, fuck you. I'll see you Monday at school. I'll see your ass now. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Like, I'm getting candy, bitch. Exactly. <laughs> so that was that. And then as I got older, um, I took my sister with me. Sometimes I take her trick or treating. And then sometimes she's just, she grew out of it a lot faster than I did. She's like 11 years old. Like, I'm done. I don't want to do this shit anymore. So at that point, I was like 15, walking around with buddies, you know, and we're trick or treating in bags, you know. All we would do, we would just buy masks. But we started getting fucked with a lot by the neighborhood gang members. You know, oh, you're wearing masks. You guys out trick or treat. You guys got eggs, you know, 
bombing was a big thing. You know, that's the one time of the year gangbangers didn't use guns; they used eggs, <laughs> which is really <laughs> weird. So fun, yeah. You know, and they're like, "Oh, like, you want to take a break today? Yeah, take a break, we, yeah. egg, motherfucker." That or they snatch your candy, and you'd be like, "They'd want to fight," and then that's when the really pro- the problems would start. So we kind of stopped, and I knew it stopped for me when me and my one of my buddies uh, we decided to be each other for Halloween. That's we were like we were done. At that point, you've gone too far. Yeah, we were done. Like we go to school. I remember that morning, uh, we swapped jackets, and we had masks. So we got to class, and I sat in his seat, and he sat in mine. So the teacher's like, "Oscar, take your uh, take your mask off," and I'm just like, "No, you don't take it off. You're going to detention." And they call me, and they're like, "Take your mask off," and he's shaking his head, and we're throwing a fit and everything. So I like, fine, and then we're like. We we're trying to muffle our voices like it's Halloween. This is bullshit. So they're like, all right, fine. So for like the first half hour, they let us, and then they're like, okay, it's not cute anymore. Get up. We're saying the Pledge of Allegiance. Take that shit off. So I take mine off. He takes his off, and everybody's like, <gasps> like the greatest fucking magic trick in the world. Like, dude, <laughs> you know. And then later that night, we went trick or treating, and people we were just no mask, nothing. Trick or treating. People are like, what the hell? What are you supposed to be like? I'm him. He's me. They're like, all right, whatever. Give us the candy. Once but again, I remember. The, I remember where you live, motherfuckers. With the Snickers. I used to start handing. I hand start handing out candy after a while. And but you know that's. I start shit. I've, out I've never handed candy out. out. I've I, never handed candy out. <clears throat> I always thought that was fun. I always. Th- I always. Right. Not to be cool. a dickhead. I just never handed it out because I, I was, was never funny. home. Right. Or my mother's house. Well, not the, well. The house she lived in before the apartment she lives in now is in a cul-de-sac. So you'd hardly ever right, get yeah, kids in there. You know, my dad would do it. And like here, whatever. Dude, no. I, uh, closing, because we got to wrap this. <coughs> My buddy, Frankie Scardino, once he turned 21, he started giving that Halloween candy at his parents' house mm-hmm. with a full liquor bar. For the parents? For the parents. Yep. Nice. I've seen that. I've seen, you know, the parents, nice. as they get the little flask. Yeah. Like, he would have, I mean, he, he pulled out a full mm-hmm. bar. That's funny. With glasses, and you want a shot of Jack, or vodka, or what you want. That's make cool. A, make, you know, make you this. He's like, it's Halloween for everybody. And he dressed up and scared little kids and shit. My buddies do that. They decorate and they scare. And I think, you know, people, people like going to the house for that. I mean, he, it, uh, it's fun. I was there. He had me handing out drinks. And he buried himself in leaves in a plastic chair by the front door in a scream costume. A lot of people did that. And he yeah. started scaring little kids. And I'll never forget this. You'll appreciate it. He fucking scares the shit out of these two. He's probably like seven and eight. And there was a little kid with a pot like four. And he was dressed up as the Blue Ranger. Nice. And he looked at Frank like... I'm gonna whoop your ass. I'm the Blue Ranger. Nice. It was awesome, dude. Like his his siblings were like, ah! and they like cowered off, and he was just like, "We're gonna throw down." <laughs> you know what though? I gotta say, if it wasn't for trick or treating and Halloween, I would not be sitting here doing this podcast with you guys right now. And I'll tell you why. Halloween. I don't remember the ex- 91, 92 ish. The very first time I ever received a comic book. Really? I was trick or treating. I remember. I, I kind of remember the neighborhood, but I remember the latest. Uh, like a Betty Crocker looking black lady, whatever. And I knocked on the door. Yeah, and she wow. looks at yeah. And she looks at me and she go, I'll never forget the word she told me. She looked at me, she said, Nice costume. Feed your mind, not your belly. And she put Spider Man number fifteen, guest starring the beast drawn by Eric Larson, in my pail. And I was like, I know that guy from T V. Took it home. I was fucking hooked. Ever since then I've been in a comic. So thank you for that to that old lady back when I was eight years old. That's Ever since that, that's how I got into comics. Halloween trick or treating. Now are you guys still Halloween guys? Are you still uh, do you still go to parties or I, I've never or? gone to Halloween parties. Okay. Never like growing up. It was all like in the city I, I I'm not trying to be stereotypical, trying to look like a badass or whatever. It was all about seriously just fucking survival. Stay out of everybody's business. Stay home because it's too dangerous to go outside. When I moved out to the suburbs at seventeen I didn't know anybody. So I didn't fucking win anywhere. As an adult, that shit was already passe for me. So I'd go out to the nightclubs or whatever. But now that I, I had my daughter, my whole thing was my growing up. My parents weren't very sociable with other families. They were always they never celebrated. I mean, we celebrated Christmas within ourselves. We never had anybody over. We never went anywhere. Thanksgiving was the same. Halloween always. All, I remember one year my sister had a birthday party and my dad decides everybody shut up. I want to go take a nap. And you're like, wow, really? It was like you might as well kick everybody out. You Your know, dad sounds like he was like the Puerto Rican Archie <laughs> Bunker, Ma- and then some, <laughs> and then some. Um, so growing up, I always told myself, when I have my own place, I want to do, th- I want to decorate for Christmas, I want to have people over, I want to have a Christmas party, I want to have a Halloween party, I want to do these things. And now that I have a daughter who's very active and she wants to do, she's just everything. You know, you got a little kid. 
they learn so fast. You know, they want to be a part of everything. And, and you want to give your child everything growing up that you didn't get. You want them to have these experiences. So when they grow up, they can be like, you know, hey, we used to do Halloween parties. We used to do Christmas parties. Because then you're just like, I didn't do shit. I didn't do shit. You know, it's like, no, you don't want that. You want the fun. And my girl's like that, too. Halloween is my girlfriend's Christmas. Well, that's, it's my Christmas. It's she for a lot of loves, and it doesn't hurt her that her birthday is November 1st. Right. And my daughter's right. birthday is November 9th. Now, do you so, think, do you think, do you think hurts it, my wallet. Do you guys think, <laughs> and, and once again, I, do you guys think that there was, you know, when we were kids, it was a big deal. And then because of all the crazy shit, it kind of declined. And then I think, oh, it, absolutely. And then I think because our generation got to the point where it's like, okay, now we can afford stuff, yeah. it all kind of shifted it, back. It, it goes back, yeah. You think so? Of course. But yeah, definitely, hands down, because of these fucking idiots out there putting razor blades and poisoning shit, and, you know, you have, it, it, the safety now what out here in the burbs I think you trick or treat from like what is it four to six till seven and the malls like that till dark once it gets dark you're done and that's the fun it's Halloween who wants you know it's you're supposed to be on the dark you're supposed to have the flashlights and ten hours out till like nine ten o'clock yeah. Yeah. See, when Harley gets old enough to go out with her friends and everything and trick or treat, I'll be the parent that I'm sitting at the block in, in the car. And then, okay, I'll, you go to this house. Once you get to this house, I'll pull up and then I'll block the block. Well, I'll be there, but I won't be there. You right. know what I mean? Let her have her fun, but I'm not going to sit there and let her get vandalized and somebody take her fucking candy because daddy be going yeah, to jail. You know what? No, that's something. Now that you're bringing it up in closing, this is something me and my friends started doing once I got older is we heard about kids going around and jacking kids' candy. So we just started walking around the neighborhood. Mm-hmm. And like watching for shit like that. See, I right. never had that problem. I always went with a big group. <clears throat> I love fucking taffy apple with the peanuts and shit. I fucking love those things. It's a guilt- excuse me, guilty pleasure. But sometimes they would hand them out, probably, or they'd hand out regular apples. Now, who the fuck wants a regular yeah, apple? I had never understood that either. But it's <clears throat> the same assholes that gave out pennies, right? You get that shit. Hey, pennies add up though. You can spend oh, pennies. You, you can't did. spend apples. <laughs> yeah, nothing sucks more than coming home and having like five pennies with the fuck. Not for me. I had the corner store, the bodega, they sell five cent candies. <laughs> I was stocking up on lemon heads, man. Nice. But um, it's just, you know, assholes like that. You know, you get the apple. Sometimes you might be in the mood for an apple. And the apple might be absolutely perfect. The bitch or might just I open the bag. Yeah, but that's the thing. You don't know. And it, and it, yeah. But that's, and it's not just that. They were doing it later on. I don't know if you got, with candy bars, like Snickers. Yeah. And no, it, they, it, they would it, take the syringe yeah. and stick it in. And like, it the hole is so yeah. small, you wouldn't see I it. I honestly wonder how much of that wasn't just like... A, a, a scare urban, tactic, urban, yeah. yeah. Urban, uh, just trying urban to freak legends. people out, you right? Know? Well, for a while they were having. The, I never uh, got sick, and I never knew anybody else who for, got uh, sick. Thank for God. I, I know what they did is they um the the hospitals for a while were offering X ray kids candies. Oh yeah. Beef and I remember that. Yeah, if you yeah. put it on, the, I, I, I didn't go, but yeah, right. if you put it and see, and you'd be all good. Interesting. So, well, gentlemen, that closes up our Halloween spectacular. Issue 25, part 3. Yes, Halloween. tomorrow is Halloween, so people, please, if you have kids and you're taking little ones out, let them have fun, but watch over your child. Uh, if you are out there trick-or-treating, have fun. Don't be a dickhead. Enjoy it. You know, you being a dickhead spoils it down the line for everybody else. If you're going to a Halloween party, get a designated driver. Yes, <laughs> and take condoms. And what? Maybe some lube, you know. Something. And most importantly, guys... Have fun. Halloween, yeah. Halloween is memories, man. So I have mean, fun, be you know, safe. I mean, those are those are some cherished memories. Totally. So uh, have a good time and be safe. So for everybody at Comics Remixed, everybody at the Spinner Rack, thank you guys for listening. Have fun. We'll see you uh, next week when we uh, we're now entering our last month for the season. Sure. So uh, join us for that. For everything Comics Remixed, hit us up at comicsremix.com. Uh, that includes the 101, the spinner rack, and everything else we've got going on. Any questions, comments, concerns, always hit us up on Facebook. You can hit us up at comicsremixed at gmail.com. Or if you have a question for somebody specifically, whether it be Carrie, Brian, myself, David, John, whoever, um, same email address, just use that person's name as an example, brian at comicsremix.com. So uh, thank you guys. As Carrie said, please have fun and stay safe. Happy Halloween, guys. Have Thanks. A good, have, a, have a good Halloween and uh, enjoy. One more day to Halloween, Halloween. I remember that song. One more day to Halloween, Happy, happy Halloween.